Few could have predicted the remarkable turn of events that lay ahead at Prenton Park in this fifth round replay in 2001. After a drab first encounter between top flight Southampton and first division Tranmere Rovers, the Saints under the management of Glen Hoddle were favourites, but Tranmere were not to be taken lightly. Merseyside rivals Everton were dispatched 3 0 at Goodison Park in the previous round, and Tranmere had reached the League Cup final the previous season. Good evening from Guy Hamilton, and welcome to Prenton Park for this FA Cup fifth round replay between Tranmere Rovers and Southampton. Let's have a look at the two teams' lineups tonight. Starting with the home side, Tramley Rovers are skippered tonight by a former Southampton player. Number 25, Paul Rideout, spent three years at the Dell and takes the armband tonight from Clint Hill, who was injured on Saturday. So number five, Dave Challoner, replaces Hill in defence. This the only change for Tranmere at home tonight. They're likely to be even more advanced in their formation and the front two will probably get more support now from that five-man midfield. Well, Southampton manager Glenn Hoddle has uh, been bemoaning his bad luck, really. He's been hit by international call-ups, a cup tie player, and, of course, injuries. So 21-year-old Kevin Gibbons comes in for a rare start in place of the injured Jason Dodd. In the centre of midfield, the reliable Chris Marsden replaces fellow Englishman Matt Oakley, who was injured on Saturday. Southampton have the most informed keeper in the country at the moment. Paul Jones has shut out the opposition in eight of the last nine games. Southampton get us underway, kicking from right to left. Can Tranmere Rovers do it again? That's the question everybody has been asking inside Brenton Park. Already beaten six Premiership teams in just over a season and a half in cup competitions, and they've started vibrantly here, charging into tackles. They'll be more revved up than they were on Saturday. This is right out. Turns 360 degrees and finds Parkinson on that far side. And the young defender was a little lucky there, Gibbons. It seemed to bounce off his back without him knowing too much about it. It's a real live wire little Andy Parkinson. A few quicker on the pitch tonight. Plenty in the penalty area for Tranmere. And Yates came ever so close to giving them an early lead. Southampton break the deadlock in this replay. Fast counter-attacking play from Glenn Hoddle's side. And finish with a wonderful curling effort from the Moroccan. Heading may not be a speciality, but there was no way that the Tranmere keeper was going to get anywhere near that effort. Pahars, BT. Slull, who has put down the centre for most of the uh, opening to this game, as opposed to the normal centre forward, BT. Now, this is Parkinson. Oh dear, poor pass. Easily picked off by Draper. Pahars, again, Catchlaw goes through the centre. Here is Catchlaw. 
onside, going wide, and 2-0, Tessum touching it in from barely a yard. And again, Hassan Kachlul has been involved in virtually all the major incidents at that end of the ground. He's also got an injury for himself, but look at the space for Kachlul on this near side. Tramir half-hearted appeals for a penalty. It was a clever ball across that, not for a penalty, sorry, for offside. It's a possible offside here with a forward pass to Tessum, but Steve Dunn, who disallowed three goals on Saturday for Southampton. Real frustration on and off the pitch for those following and hoping for Tramia Rovers to reach the quarter-finals for the, just the second time in their history. Bridge. And the full-back has continued his run. It's fair to say he doesn't agree with the referee's decision. Oh, he thought he should have got a free kick there or a corner. Oh, he thought we'd seen the last of uh, Dave Challoner before, but he, like Catchlall, has soldiered on. Many, many throw in since the opening ten minutes for him to take and again there's another error by Akterberg it could be 3-0 and with a bit more composure it would have been Catch Law picks it up and the keeper is back in position now and Trammy just are all over the place again it's just pressure 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 from BT error from the goalkeeper error previously from the defender and you might say an error from BT Do so as a tackle from behind and looked late on Joe Tessum. And we've got to dig in for the final few seconds of this first half. Oh, and it's in, is it? It's gone over the line. Dean Richards is claiming it. And with the final kick of the first half, Southampton might just have booted themselves into the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. It's another messy goal from Tranmere's point of view. Tessin with the header here, it took a horrible deflection. And then Richards, if not first with his foot, certainly secondly with his head, has put Southampton in an awesomely strong position. Southampton three and nobody but nobody could have predicted this and Hoddle played in two cup finals for Tottenham at the start of the 80s the Ricky Villa final it's Manchester City and then Hoddle himself scored the winner against Queen's Park Rangers the year later from the penalty spot Kumas, good crossing opportunity, and it needed the intervention of Klaus Lundekwam at the near post. Mark 
Atkinson. They've got one back. Been a much better performance from Tranmere at the start of this second half. And this was a terrific drive from Parkinson. Defenders coming out, maybe just played Tranmere strikers on side, but even so, for a ruck of players. In fact, it was a touch by Rideout. And Yates, can he get the shot in? He can! Oh, it's not run for them. And they'll have to settle for a corner. Ferocious effort at the goalkeeper, and it could have really come away at any angle because Jones didn't know a lot about it. And it was so unfortunate for Tranmere that it didn't fall at the feet of Rideout. Kumas's corner, and in! 3-2! Paul Rideout has scored his second. And Tramira two-thirds of the way towards a remarkable comeback. Dead and buried, we thought, at half-time. They're now just one goal away from drawing level with Southampton. And it's the former Saint again. BT wins the header. It's a hurry clearance away by Tranmere, then a cool knock back. Parkinson gaining ground on the defender, Dean Richards. Oh, the goalkeeper's messed it up. A chance for 3 3. What a save! Oh, Barlow denied by Paul Jones. So, so close for Tranmere Rovers. But credit the goalkeeper for getting up so, so quickly. It's only a corner. Kumas. And Jobson is penalised. Jones is furious. Look at Parkinson eat up the ground on Richards. And Jones wasn't happy with the back pass, but he's got across so quickly. He didn't want a back pass. Oh, it looked like a tapping, didn't it, for Barlow? Flynn. Options to his right. Parkinson. No, he didn't want it there. He wanted it ahead of him. Parkinson's cross again. It's Dean Richards who's, well, I don't say holding the team together, but he's certainly the key man at the heart of that Southampton defence, which has been put under unstinting pressure in this second half. That's a late challenge, it'll be a free kick to Tramir Rovers. Marsden will be the first Southampton player to be booked. The Tramir fans want a bit more than a yellow, but Steve Dunn has already indicated be just the booking. <laughs> Flynn takes it quickly. Parkinson in space. Good ball in! 3-3! Three, three. He's got his hat-trick! Ball right out! What a fight back by Tremmy Rovers! Dead and buried at half-time. And this man, the former Everton player, has now revived and resuscitated hopes of playing Liverpool in the quarter-finals. Quickly taken free kick and Parkinson, who's been so important in the second half, onto the head of Rideout. What an incredible evening it's been. Tranmere Rovers 3, Southampton 3.
and still 10 minutes to go. And where is your money going now? All the momentum is with the cup heroes of last season. And the cup heroes of this season. Well, I wonder if he came up with any instances in his 19 years of professional football where a team were 3-0 down and went on to win a cup tie. And Paul Rideout must have been extra keen when the draw was made against Southampton. And he's turned in a magnificent performance tonight for another top-notch centre-forward, his manager. And Glenn Hoddle must be wondering where it all went wrong. Pahars, you just see there, sitting on the bench behind him. Was that a tactical decision? Or was it an injury to the Latvian? No, Gerard Houllier didn't go home at half-time. Whatever happens, he'll have learnt a lot about the relative strengths and weaknesses of both these sides. And Tramir are now looking for a winner, and I can hardly believe I'm saying that. And this is the team who are bottom of the first division. And they're putting pressure under the goalkeeper again. It's a horrible back pass, and Jones once more is not happy with his centre half. On this occasion, it was Lundekwan. Previously, it was Dean Jones, uh, Dean Richards. And that really symptomatic of the way Southampton have played in the second half and the incredible pressure that Tranmere Rovers have exerted. It's an all-seater stadium, but no one is sitting. Right out in the penalty area, away by Dean Richards. Right out wins the header. It's Parkinson. It's four, three, Barlow. Oh my word! Has there ever been a game like this? Stuart Barlow, oh, he's going to be booked, but it'll be the happiest booking he's ever got. He might have just booked them a place in the quarterfinals. Head tennis inside the penalty area, Barlow reacted quickest. And the man who came on at half-time might have written his name into Tranmere Rovers FA Cup history. minutes to go and now Southampton are looking for an equaliser it's Dean Richards again ball just wouldn't sit for him Jobson came across at the expense of a throw in Law wins the flick on, and Cashlow goes for goal. Tramir get it clear, Barlow. That will do. A few more seconds drift away for Southampton. In a match that has been snatched away from them. has now got to get it high up the field. Good header by Jobson. Lundekvam. They need a break here, Southampton. 
might be their last attack. And Yates wellies it for touch like a rugby player. Paul Rideout enjoyed a memorable day at Wembley in 95. This has got a rank alongside it. They're almost there. They're there! Tranmere Rovers have completed one of the most remarkable comebacks in FA Cup history. And the team, bottom of the first division, 3-0 down at half-time, have won! After such an astonishing comeback, Tranmere were handed a glamour tie at home to Liverpool. Their cup exploits came to an end, with the Reds running out 4-2 winners. But Rovers could be more than proud of their exploits.